And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside Jimmy John's Field here on the USPBL YouTube channel. Tonight it will be the West Side versus East Side matchup as the Woolly Mammoths battle the Diamond Hoppers. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo Ortel. I'll be broadcasting solo tonight on the Senior Citizens Night, two for one Wednesdays, and high school seniors pack the lawn night here at Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica. It's our first Wednesday game of the year so far the standings in this season looking pretty good so far as the Utica Unicorns currently sit in first place at an 11 and 3 record east side in second at 7 and 6 both teams in the eastern division in the western division the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers are first in their division however third in the league with a 6 and 7 record and west side Woolly Mammoths currently sitting at 3 and 11 last in the West and in the league overall. So Eastside comes in second ranked in the season standings and Westside comes in fourth. So Eastside has had a good season, one of two teams above 500 so far, but it's been a tough start for Mark Wiedemeyer and his Westside Woolly Mammoths. So the starting pitchers for tonight's game, for the Eastside Diamond Hoppers, it will be the familiar face of Colby Neely, of course, in his first season here in the U.S. PBL, but Colby Neely, the product out of Bothell, Washington, played professionally with the Los Angeles Dodgers organization, reached full A ball and a total 3.57 ERA in the minors with 27 strikeouts and 35 in the third innings. But in his first full season here in the U.S. PBL last year, just three games for him, and he did struggle with an 0-1 record but it has been a different story for Colby Neely so far this season. He owns the Hoppers' second best ERA, sitting at an exact 2.00 mark. Yet to tally a winner loss, has made five appearances, two games started, so he, he will be making his third start. He's thrown 18 innings, giving up just 11 hits, four earned runs, has walked eight batters, but has struck out 21 and limiting opponents to a Hoppers' team best 1.75 opponent batting average. And for the Woolly Mammoths, it will be Will Neely making his US PBL debut as we just had our college senior showcase on Monday. We've seen a lot of changes in all of the team's rosters. So Will Neely, a right-handed pitcher out of Knoxville, Tennessee, and he played believe it or not, Division I ball at the University of Tennessee. So this could be a guy with a lot of potential entering the league and making his first start. So in four years at Tennessee, he had a 4.35 earned run average. He was used as both a relief pitcher and starting pitcher, but towards the end of his college career, used more of a starter, and he did enjoy better success as a reliever a 6.29 ERA this past season so it was a down season for Will Neely but it will be a battle of Neely's today with Colby Neely of the Hoppers facing off against Will Neely of these West Side Woolly Mammoths and let's take a look now at the starting lineups for the Hoppers the home team it'll be Pat Adams batting first and playing center field batting second the shortstop Kevin Watley Batting third, Wesley Jones, he'll be playing third base. Zachary Gray is in the cleanup spot, he'll be playing first base. A new face in C.J. Huntley will be manning right field. Also another new face, Steven Ring will be the D.H. hitting sixth. Batting seventh, a third new face in this Hoppers lineup, Daniel Valerio, he'll be in left field. Freddie Geely will be manning the second base position as he usually is for these Hoppers. And rounding out the bottom of this lineup is, of course, the catcher, Tommy Lacongo once again, Colby Neely on the bump. And let's take a quick look at the Mammoths starting lineup. Alec Craig, a new face, will be playing second, and he'll be leading off. Ryan Kemp moves over from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers over to the west side. Woolly Mammoths, he'll be playing third base. Sonny Cortez, the hot bat so far this season, has been a USPBL player of the week. He'll be hitting third and playing center field. Ethan Whisker, another USPBL player of the week, Back in week number four will be in right field and cleaning up for the Mammoths. Jake Barbie will be playing first base. He's hitting fifth. A new face in Will Johnson, a left fielder, will be batting sixth. And hitting seventh, Jackson Smith, the catcher. I had the pleasure of interviewing him 
at the media desk in front of the stadium before this game started. Hitting eighth will be Jake Polshin. He'll be the DH in tonight's contest. And rounding out the Mammoths lineup will be the shortstop, Ryan Dobson, who we usually see towards the front end of the Mammoths lineup, but maybe trying to use him as that double leadoff hitter in the nine spot. He does have a lot of speed. And, of course, like I mentioned, Will Neely will be the starting pitcher making his USPBL debut. So we will see what this University of Tennessee product can bring. He is five foot eleven, and just finished up his senior season at the University of Tennessee. So we should be in for a good contest tonight between the East Side Diamond Hoppers and the West Side Woolly Mammoths. Hoppers, one of two teams, like I said, above 500. So they've had a good season so far, but the Mammoths are looking to turn it around as they are in the bottom of the league in the standings. But Utica. The Utica Unicorns, of course, have been the team to beat so far this year. They're in first place in the standing, so both teams trying to gain some ground on these Unicorns. So we will be in for another good contest here. The National Anthem about to get underway, so I'll take a break and be back shortly on the USPBL YouTube channel.
And welcome back, everyone, to the USPBL YouTube channel. Leo Ortel on the call, broadcasting solo tonight. If you miss the intro, we'll take another look at the West Side Woolly Mammoth starting lineup. Hitting first will be Alec Craig, the second baseman. He'll be making his USPBL debut in a public game today. Ryan Kemp will be hitting second and playing third base. Just moved over from the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers to the West Side Woolly Mammoth, so making his Mammoth's debut. Sonny Cortez will be hitting third. He'll be manning center field. Ethan Whisker is hitting cleanup. He'll be in right field. Jake Barbie will be batting fifth and playing first. Will Johnson is hitting in the sixth spot, and he'll be in left field. Jackson Smith batting seventh. He'll be the backstop tonight. Jake Pulshin is the designated hitter. He's hitting eighth, and rounding out the order is Ryan Dobson, the shortstop for the Mammoths. And then we'll also take a quick look at the Eastside Diamond Hoppers defensive alignment. It will be Daniel Valerio in left field, making his USPBL debut. Pat Adams, of course, in center. C.J. Huntley in right. In the infield, from left to right, Wesley Jones at third. Kevin Watley at short. Freddie Geely is at second, and Zachary Gray at first. And Tommy Lacongo, the east side backstop, will be catching the starting pitcher in Colby Neely, who has had a great season so far, brings in his affiliated experience with the Los Angeles Dodgers organization. He threw some innings last year for the Hoppers, 14 and one-third, had 18 strikeouts, five walks, a 6.91 ERA, but it really has been a different story so far this year for Neely, a 2.00 ERA in 18 innings pitched and 21 strikeouts, so play about to get underway here. It will be Alec Craig making his public USPBL debut here against Colby Neely, but Alec Craig in yesterday's non-public game which was against the Beavers as the Mammoths lost 5-1. to one. Alec Craig was a bright spot hitting in the lower portion of the Mammoths lineup. He was 2-for-3. So definitely a good first game for Craig. So he looks at a pair of pitches here, one ball and one strike. Craig attended Chestnut Hill College as he takes another pitch there, one and two count as that one hit the inside corner, but Craig tried out in the Senior Showcase on Monday, had a great 2018 season at Chestnut Hill College, which is Division II NCAA ball as he takes that one-two pitch that missed outside, but Craig was a finalist for the Hero Sports Division II Baseball Player of the Year. He's got a lot of speed. He hit 403 as he singles up the middle here. Pat Adams will cut off that ball and get it in, but Alec Craig with a hot start to his USPBL career. And he's also got some speed on the base paths as well. 47 of 48 stolen base attempts converted in his senior season, so look out for him on the bases as it will be Ryan Kemp stepping up for the first time in a public game as a West Side Woolly Mammoth, so moves over from the Beavers, which is something that we see a few times in the USPBL history. Some guys will move from one team to another as that pitch is in the dirt, and Alec Craig will move down to second. So you can already see the speed of Craig is having an impact on this Mammoth's lineup. The Mammoths enter the game as one of the top offensive teams They've got good power numbers as well with nine home runs, 58 RBIs, a 252 average, which is pretty good compared to the other teams in the league, but their pitching staff has been the thing that has struggled for their team as Kemp takes a pair of balls here, 2-0 count, but also adding a few offensive weapons. Kemp has had a good season. Kemp so far with the Westside Woolly Mammoths one for three with an RBI, which came in that non-public game. A 3-0 count on him. Kemp not the tallest hitter up there at the plate, five foot four, so he does tend to draw quite a few walks. But he had been an on-base machine for the Beavers, so I'm sure the Mammoths are definitely happy to have him 
in the top of their lineup. The 3-0 pitch misses way outside. Throw down to second, Kevin Watley luckily able to snag that one as the throw was a little bit high, but Kemp will take the free pass. So not the start that Colby Neely wanted here. He had walked just eight batters in 18 innings pitched and struck out 21. So control really hasn't been a problem for Neely so far, but seems to be playing a factor here as he walks Kemp on four straight pitches after the leadoff single to Craig. So now it will be Sonny Cortez. Of course, one of the best hitters so far this year in the USPBL leads the league in average at 396. He'll take a pitch there that's in there for a strike. Cortez, of course, a USPBL Player of the Week honoree already. He's got five RBIs, 21 hits. Neely misses on that 0-1 with an off-speed pitch. Didn't hang it, luckily, but kept it high enough to where Cortez could not hit it. Cortez also owns a 515 on on-base percentage, which is the tops among all qualifying players as that 1-1 one -one pitch misses outside. Another off-speed try by Neely. I was talking to the assistant coach for the Mammoths before the, before the game, Brian Cluppy, and they were expecting Colby Neely to come out in the first inning throwing strikes, but also using his off-speed stuff, which we have seen from him so far. He goes back to the fastball there and finds the inside part of the zone, 2-2 two and two count. Of course, Brian Cluppy last year was with the Bakersfield Train Robbers in the Pecos League, won the championship with them. He was a pretty young manager, one of the youngest in the Pecos League history as Cortez grounds one over to Wesley Jones. He picks it, throws to second for one. There will be no relay to first as Geely hung on to that ball, but the runner will move up to third, so it will be first and third as Cortez grounds into the fielder's choice and Ryan Kemp out at second there. So still a pretty good situation here for the Mammoths in the first inning. They're coming off a tough 5-1 to loss yesterday against the Beavers, trying to up their season record. They have struggled as they are just 3-11, three and eleven, three and a half games back on the Beavers. They'd like to move into first, and they're not too far behind, but pretty far behind those Utica Unicorns at 11-3, who lead the league by three and a half games over the second-place Hoppers. As this one's grounded to third, that will get the run in, so Whisker does his job there. As Alec Craig will come around to score. So may not look too good in the scorebook, but looks good on the scoreboard. For the Mammoths, as Whisker gets the RBI ground out. And also Sonny Cortez moves up to second, so two down now. But the Mammoths strike first here on the first Wednesday game in the 2019 USPBO campaign. So it'll be Jake Barbie's turn here with two down now. Barbie, a left-handed hitter, has had a good year, 280 with one home run, 10 RBIs. He'll take a pitch on the inside corner. A good fastball from Neely hits the strike zone. Barbie also has four doubles, also a triple, so six total extra base hits for him out of the 14 that he has this season. And Barbie takes that pitch in there for a strike. So he's behind early here, 0-2. Barbie can play many different positions, pretty much anywhere except for pitcher. He's playing first base today, but has been used as a catcher so far this season. But also has the ability to play some third and also man the outfield. So very versatile player, also very flexible, can do the splits at first base, which is pretty interesting, but makes him a lot more effective for the stretch over there at first base when he's playing in the infield. He's down here 0-2. Check swing attempt there. Kevin Watley will field this one. Throw over to first. Zachary Gray with the catch, and that will retire the away half of the first inning. The West Side Woolly Man has put up one on a RBI ground out from Ethan Whisker that scores Alec Craig. So one nothing after a half inning of play. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel.
And welcome back, everyone, to the USPBL YouTube channel. Leading off for the Hoppers is Pat Adams. He's facing off here against a new starting pitcher in the USPBL, Will Neely, making his debut. He's a right-handed pitcher standing at 5'11", and comes to us from the University of Tennessee. It's a 1-2 count early in this at bat against Pat Adams, who has been one of the most productive offensive players in the league so far this year. He'll ground one over to second. Ryan Kemp will field that one and throw to Barbie at first for out number one. So not the way that the Hoppers wanted to start their night. But to give a little bit more background on Will Neely in high school was the number two right-handed pitcher in the state of Tennessee ranked by perfect game so a lot of potential out of high school for him in his first two seasons at Tennessee was used mainly as a relief pitcher and had some good seasons for them posting a 3.96 ERA in his freshman year and a 3.43 in his sophomore year and then used as a starter his last two years in his senior season, a 6.29 ERA, so pretty high. He did have a down year, but it will be interesting to see what we see in his outing here against the Hoppers in his debut. Kevin Watley at the plate. He's down one and two, so we're seeing Neely already coming out, just trying to hit the zone, throw strikes, and force the Hoppers to swing. And a late time called here by Watley as... Will Neely developing a pretty good pace out there already, not messing around. A little bit frustrated here. He's got a pretty quick delivery, and it looks like it will be a drop third strike here. A good athletic play by Jackson Smith. He'll throw out Kevin Watley for a quick out number two, and that will be the first strikeout for Will Neely in his USPBL career. It'll be Wesley Jones's turn with two down. He'll take a 93 mile an hour fastball that missed high. So Neely, not the tallest guy, not the biggest guy out there either, but a pretty good fastball. Looked like maybe a two seamer there with some tailing action on it. Gets Wesley Jones to swing right through it. And the 1-1, one, one. this one grounded over to the right side. Jake Barbie with the diving play, the flip over to the pitcher. Neely can't hang on to it there. And now Wesley Jones heading towards second, trying to stand up the tag. The umpire says that he is safe, and the Mammoths appear to be questioning that call. We'll see if there will be an appeal, but not sure if there will be. So that will go as an error. Not sure who on, but most likely will not be ruled a hit. Interesting situation there. Barbie with a very good athletic dive, but just unable to complete that flip to Will Neely covering the bag. Not sure if Neely couldn't find the bag. A tough thing for pitchers to do is field. Something that they don't work on a whole lot during practice, but either way, it will be a runner on second here for Eastside with two down. And Zachary Gray at the plate. He'll ground one up the middle. Dobson fields it cleanly there and throws to Barbie at first, and that will retire the side. The hoppers go down as Neely faces four batters. One error for the Mammoths. No hits, runs, or walks for the hoppers. The Mammoths lead 1-0 after one inning of play. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
Jumping back into the action here on the USPBL YouTube channel, Leo Ortel here on the call. Will Johnson, a newcomer here at the plate for the Westside Woolly Mammoths, takes a few pitches here from Colby Neely, one and one count. But Will Johnson comes to us from Eastern Kentucky University. A great senior season for him as he flies one out into left center field. Looks like it's going to be Pat Adams under it for the catch. So Will Johnson is retired here in his public USPBL debut. But Johnson, to go back to his senior season, 303, 16 home runs and 47 RBIs, was ranked at the top in many categories in Division I baseball overall. So could be a good bat in the lineup here, but... The lineup turns over. It will be Jackson Smith here for West Side. First pitch swinging, sent into center field. Pat Adams. It'll be routine for him. He makes the catch. A quick out number two. So a different start to this inning than it was last inning for the Mammoths, as they got the leadoff single from their newcomer second baseman Alec Craig. Ryan Kemp followed with a walk. And then Ethan Whisker eventually grounds out but drives in Alec Craig as the runners had advanced to first and third on the Sonny Cortez fielder's choice. But aggressive more so in this inning are the Mammoths. A little break in the action here as Jake Pulchin, the DH, will step in. But first talking to Mark Wienemeyer down the third base line there. Wienemeyer in his first season. Managing the West Side Woolly Mammoths, Brian Cluppy is down at first base, the first base coach and assistant coach, more of a pitching specialist. Polchin takes the first strike offering. And that 0-1 pitch rolled over to Kevin Watley, a good backhand play in the strong arm, the throw to first. And he will be called out. The throw was wide, but Zach Gray able to stay on the bag there as the Mammoths go down 1-2-3, but they still have a 1-0 lead. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel. To the home half of the second we go here on the USPBL YouTube channel. It'll be C.J. Huntley leading off for the Hoppers in this inning. Huntley making his USPBL debut. Comes to us from Kalamazoo, Michigan, pretty close by. And his previous team was Indiana State University. So some Division I ball. Takes a pair of balls here and now flies one out to left center field. Sonny Cortez ranging over. He'll make the catch there for the first out. So, so far, Will Neely looking sharp, not messing around with this east side lineup. 
He's attacking the strike zone. He's got a pretty good fastball. And a pretty interesting windup as well. Really puts his whole body into it. And it will be another newcomer here. Steven Ring swings at the first pitch that he sees in his USPBL career. Steven Ring is a product out of Hillsdale College, and he had quite the college career. I actually had the pleasure of watching him for a season or two when my brother played for Hillsdale. And Steven Ring sends one over to left field. Johnson chases it down there, makes a nice running catch. So Ring goes down in his first to bat, and the first two hoppers in this inning are retired. So just like last inning, a pair of flyouts here. So another new bat in this Hoppers lineup, the third in a row. It will be Daniel Valerio standing in, the right handed hitter. Will take a pitch that misses outside 92 miles an hour from Will Neely. And Valerio standing in, attended Southeastern University. He'll take another 92-mile-an-hour offering. This time it finds the outside corner. And that 1-1 pitch rolled over to third. Ryan Kemp makes the play a low throw in the dirt, and Jake Barbie can't handle it there. So that one will go beyond... The first baseman, and Valerio will move up to second. So the second air now for the Mammoths already had the chance to go one, two, three in back-to-back -back innings. And actually, I believe that was Jake Pulshin over at first instead of Jake Barbie. Jake Barbie did start the contest at first. But it looks like Pulshin is now playing first base. So defensive change there. Not sure if maybe Barbie tweaks something. Hopefully he's going to be okay. But another man reaches via the air for the Hoppers. And another two-out opportunity here. Freddie Geely hits one over the head of the second baseman. And Paul Nochi is waving Valerio home. The throw is wide to the right. And Freddie Geely puts the Hoppers on the board. They tie the ball game at one. So definitely not the inning that Neely wanted. Had the chance to go 1-2-3 already twice, but his defense so far not backing him up. Ryan Kemp is playing third. He's usually playing second, or at least he was when he was playing with the Beavers, so maybe some unfamiliar territory for him at third. But either way, plays that need to be made weren't made and proves to be costly here as the Hoppers tie the game. Tommy Lacongo stands in and takes a breaking ball for a strike. So Will Neely gets set here. Geely hopping off of second. The 0-1 missing outside. Geely with some good speed on second. If Lacongo can send something shallow into the outfield, it will be easy for him to score. But Geely continues to get it done with his bat. Was 2-for-3 last game with two RBIs. Already 1-for-1 one one with an RBI today. He was hitting in the two spot where Kevin Watley's now hitting. But moved back down in the lineup. But it pays off here for Paul Nochi and his Diamond Hoppers, who have had a good season so far. One of two teams above 500, entering with their 7-6 and six record. 2-1 count now on the Congo. Goes back to the fastball. This one skied. It's going to stay in play here. Looks like it's going to be the third baseman, Kemp, ranging under it. He makes the catch, and that will retire the side. But Freddie Gili, on the first pitch that he sees in his at-bat singles, to left center field to drive in Daniel Valerio for his first run in his USPBL career. So it is now a one-to-one -one ball game after two. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
Back into the action here. Two innings have passed. We're here in the top of the third. It's Ryan Dobson leading off for the Mammoths. Dobson rounds out the bottom of this lineup here in the nine spot. He'll ground one up the middle. Kevin Watley fields it. His good arm throws to first for out number one. So Watley making the tough plays there to look routine. Not an easy play by any means as he had to charge in on that ball and throw while he was running, but a very good, strong throwing arm. As we know from Kevin Watley, earned him, at least helped earn him, the 2018 USPBL Defensive Player of the Year, but has picked it up this season with his bat. So both the offensive and defensive threat now. It's Alec Craig standing in, showing bunt and not able to lay it down. So an 0-1 count on him. Craig already with one base hit in the game and his only at bat. He was two for three in his debut in the non-public contest yesterday. And this at bat deep to left center field. This one is going to fall. Looks like Valerio couldn't handle it out there. That's going to be a double for Alec Craig. Another multi-hit game for him as he was two for three in yesterday's non-public contest. So a pair of hits for him here. This one an extra base hit. So nice job there by Craig. Looked like Valerio kind of struggled with it there in left field, not able to find the ball. But it definitely kept on carrying. Looked to be kind of routine at first, but not any win factor here. Just some good solid contact in his second at bat for Alec Craig. Ryan Kemp standing in. Tommy Lacongo throws down to second base after the first pitch that Kemp takes for a ball, but... Alec Craig back in safely. Congo just trying to keep tabs on the speedy Craig, who was a very big s stolen base stealing machine, I should say, in college. Kemp grounds one. Foul down the third base side. But Craig was 47 of 48 on stolen base attempts. In 2018, his senior year at Chestnut Hill College, he's got the ability to swipe third. There's no doubt about that based on those stolen base numbers in Division II baseball. So, Congo knows he's got to keep him close. Ryan Kemp takes another one there. Two and one count on him. Kemp walked on four straight pitches back in the first. So Kemp looking to reach base again, making his public debut here for the Mammoths as Ryan Kemp was with the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers and the 2-1. That's a good off-speed pitch there and for a strike. Colby Neely features a sinker, slider, changeup, and curveball. He tends to work towards the bottom portion of the strike zone, and other teams definitely know that and have taken note of it. The 2-2. Missing outside, so full count here on Ryan Kemp, his second three-ball count, but a little bit different of a situation this time around with the two strikes. So full count, Neely looking to send him down for the first time. And that one in the dirt, a good stop by Lacongo, but he walks him. So the second walk now issued to Ryan Kemp after the Allen Craig double this time. And it's going to be the dangerous left-handed hitting Sonny Cortez batting here against Neely. Not the situation that he wanted to be in. His second walk now issued both of them to Ryan Kemp. He had a 1-2-3 inning last time around in the second. But the Mammoth's threatening once again here after pitting up a run in the first when Craig scored. Craig's got another chance to score as he's on second, getting a good secondary lead. And Cortez sends one into right field. And it looks like Craig's going to be waved home. The throw to the plate is not in time. Sonny Cortez gets it done again. The first single for him, but the second time that he has reached, he puts the Mammoths back up by one once again. It's now a 2-1 to -one ball game. So Cortez definitely not messing around there, swinging at the first pitch. The second time that Alan, Alec Craig comes around to score. So the ability to get on base and 
Also score with his great speed from second there on really a routine single, as you could say. But that's the name of the game sometimes is speed. Definitely an underrated part of the game that can be used very effectively. And it might be something that manager Mark Wiedemeyer tries to use more to his advantage with Ryan Kemp on second now. Sonny Cortez on first. Both guys with some speed. Whisker at the plate. He's down in the count 0-2. He grounded out, but drove in a run back in the first, the first run of this ballgame, which put the Mammoths up 1-0. The Hoppers answered in the second with one, and the Mammoths have already answered with one. Swing and a miss there. Whisker will go down chasing for out number two. So the first strikeout in this outing for Colby Neely, kind of surprise there as we are in the third because Neely did have good strikeout numbers entering the contest with 21 over 18 innings pitched. So averaging over one strikeout per inning, but he gets one here and it's a biggie. It's going to be Jake Barbie, the left-hander standing in Lacongo, throwing down to second once again. This one gets past Watley and Ryan Kemp will move up to third. So we have seen Lacongo throw down quite a few times already to second. He's had a few wild throws. Watley, back in the first, was able to jump and save one from going into center field, but can't do so this time. That one kind of bounced in front of him, and he wasn't able to pick it. So first and third now. It's a 1-0 count here on Jake Barbie. He grounded out to shortstop back in the first. He's got 10 RBIs coming into the game. He'll take the 1-0 offering way outside. Barbie's 10 RBIs are good for the lead league. He's got six extra base hits, four doubles, one triple, and one home run. The 2-0 misses inside, so a 3-0 count here. Looked like Neely tried that sinker ball at 89. He does go with a four seam once in a while, but you don't see him bring it out too often. He brought it out in the last start that we saw him against the Unicorns some because their scouting report said that Neely likes to use that lower portion of the strike zone with that sinker. So Neely did have to mix in his fastball more during that start. We haven't seen a whole lot of it here, but he finds it again there on the 3-0. 3-1 on Barbie. He'll step off here now. Not sure who called time. But the Mammoths would like to at least add another run here. It's a good hitter's count for Barbie. Now in his second season in the USPBL. The 3-1 misses inside. He walked him. So the third walk now issued by Neely. The second in this inning. That one will load the bases for Will Johnson. So Tommy Lacongo goes out to the mound for a breather. Trying to calm down Colby Neely, but Neely with a ton of experience, like I mentioned, in the Los Angeles Dodgers organization, and he pitched well for them. A 3.57 ERA in the minors with 27 strikeouts and 35 and one-third, so we're not really too sure why he was let go, but it's a guy that wants to make it back to affiliated baseball, and so far this season making a strong case for it. But he is struggling early on in this start. And Will Johnson deep to left field. And you can forget about it. Will Johnson with a grand slam. His first home run of his U.S. PBL career is a biggie. It puts the Mammoths up 6-1. to one. No doubter off the bat there. The first pitch that he saw... And I mentioned Johnson's power numbers at Eastern Kentucky University with 16 his senior year and driving in 47. So we knew that he had the potential to be a big threat offensively for the Mammoths and already showing signs of it early on. How about that? So Jackson Smith now will stand in with two down.
taps that 1-0 pitch on a half swing foul down that third base side. I interviewed Jackson Smith at the media desk before the game, and I was talking a little bit about the struggling start to the season that the Mammoths have had. But Jackson Smith, a veteran of this team, of course now in his second season, knows that they still have a chance to turn it around, but he likes to look at it from more of a small picture perspective, taking it one pitch at a time, one at bat at a time, one game at a time, instead of looking at it as a whole season. We're still pretty early on into this USPBL 2019 campaign, so with the addition of some new players, we don't know what each team is going to do the rest of the season, but the Mammoths with some new players are looking good so far. Will Johnson with the grand slam. Alec Craig producing at the top of their lineup. So good signs from some new hitters. And this one sent down the left field line. That should go for extra bases. Jackson Smith cruises into second standing up as the throw comes in from Valerio in left field. Easy stand-up double for Jackson Smith. So his first hit of the game. And the Mammoths continuing to threaten here with two outs. So it will be Jake Polson's try, his second time up already here in the third, taking the first pitch that missed. Polson grounded out to shortstop to end the second inning. He started off as the DH in this game, but took over Barbie's place at first. He'll ground one over to the left side. That's going to be a base hit. We'll see if Mark Wiedemeyer is going to send his runner home, and he is the throw to the plate, and he is out. What a throw there from Daniel Valerio, able to catch Jackson Smith trying to score from second. So the risky call by Mark Wiedemeyer does not pay off. A good hose there in left for Valerio. But the Mammoths put up five runs here thanks to a single from Cortez and a grand slam from the newcomer Will Johnson. It is a 6-1 ball game here on the USPBL YouTube channel.
Back into the action here in the bottom of the third inning. 6-1. Mammoth now with the lead. Pat Adams leading off. Fouls the first pitch off against Will Neely. It's a battle of the Neelys tonight as Colby Neely is on the mound for the Hoppers. And it's the debut for Will Neely as he gets Pat Adams swinging there. He's down 0-2. He had Pat Adams down in the count 1-2 back in his first at bat in which he grounded out to the second baseman. And look at that. He grounds out here to the second baseman as... Alec Craig finishes that put out, throwing it to Pulshin. So quick out number one. Neely did give up the run last inning, but really there hasn't been a ton of hard hit balls against him. It's been a few defensive mishaps that have costed the Mammoths so far, but their offense making up for it. They already do have two errors, as really the Hoppers could have been sent down 1-2-3 in both the first and second inning. So Neely would like to send him down 1-2-3 here. He got the first two outs of both innings, but then there was an error during the bat of Wesley Jones in the first, and then also one during the bat of Daniel Valerio back in the second. That proved to be costly. It's Kevin Watley's turn here. He struck out swinging back in the first inning. Watley was hitting in the nine spot in last game, which was back on June 8th, Saturday, in which the Hoppers won that one 12-3. But he's moved back into the second spot as G. Lee moves into the eighth spot. He was hitting in the second spot in that June 8th contest. 2-1 count on Kevin Watley. He was 2-3 for three last game with two runs scored. His average was dipping, but he was able to pick it back up. Comes in, hitting 245, one home run this season. And as a whole, this Hopper's team has hit just four. So not a ton of power so far, and a big swing and a miss there. Neely goes to the curveball and gets Watley swinging for the second time. So we're seeing a repeat here of the first inning. Pat Adams grounding out to second, just like he did in the first. He does so here in the third. And Watley goes down swinging in the third, just like he did in the first. Wesley Jones stands in for the second time. He reached base on an air, but almost got one past the diving Alec Craig at second. So almost a single for Jones, but it'll be a good hitter's count for him here with the 2-0. Jones is one positive spot in this Hopper's lineup, hitting 281, and he'll take that 88-mile-an-hour offering there. The Hoppers enter hitting just 236, but they've added three new bats to their lineup since the College Senior Showcase on Monday, and some player cuts were made on all teams, so you're going to see a lot of new faces as this season progresses, but it should be exciting adding some Pitchers into the rotation, some bats into these lineups trying to boost their team's records and the ultimate goal of the players trying to make it into big league ball, which we've seen 27 players move on so far into affiliated baseball. Looking for the first this season, there's a lot of players, pitchers and hitters that could do so. 2-2 two -two pitch outside, a breaking ball not where Will Neely wanted it to be. The count now full here on Wesley Jones. He'll ground one over to Ryan Kemp at third. He'll throw low again, but a good pick this time by Pulshin. Saves the base runner there, and the Hoppers are retired in order. So a tough start to the game for the Hoppers here. They're down 6-1 to one after three innings of play. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
Welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel. It's going to be 9-1-2 and two up for the Westside Woolly Mammoths. Colby Neely still on the bump here for the Hoppers after a shaky third inning for him. But he deals in a first pitch strike here to Dobson. Dobson, one of a few guys on this Mammoths team to bring in some affiliated experience. Not a ton of affiliated hitters that we have in the league, those who played under minor league organizations that are affiliated with major league ones but Dobson was with the Arizona Diamondbacks organization he'll foul off that pitch there 0-2 count Dobson back in 2018 started off with a strong batting average at 363 in short A ball but was moved up to full A and hit just 192 was eventually released He'll ground one softly to Wesley Jones. It'll be a tough play for him here. Throwing on the run. What a play by Wesley Jones for the first out. Dobson with good speed down the line. Jones knew he had to make that play quickly. And he did not miss it there. Great effort. Almost a swinging bunt there for Dobson. One that obviously isn't an intentional bunt, but acts sort of like a bunt. Softly hit down the line. So that brings us to the top of the lineup for the Mammoths. Alec Craig already two for two with a double and a single on his ledger, taking the first pitch offering for a strike. So Neely seems to have his command under control more so this inning than he did in the last. And that pitch missing below the strike zone. Something off speed there, maybe his changeup or curve, but missed. Below the knees there, pretty difficult to tell. And the 1-1 is that sinker ball. It hits the outside corner, and that's Neely's bread and butter right there. When he's got that sinker control, he's definitely effective. And Paul Nochi, who I was talking to before the game, pretty much said the same thing. Colby Neely's a guy that he knows is going to go in there and throw strikes. And when he can be effective with his sinker fastball, then... He can definitely be effective against some really good hitters, especially with this good hitting Mammoth's team. Alec Craig hits one softly over to the left side into the outfield. It's going to be Will Johnson making that play. Excuse me, that's actually Daniel Valerio making that play. My mistake on that. That's out number two. For a quick look at the defensive alignment for the Hoppers, it's Daniel Valerio in left, Pat Adams in center, C.J. Huntley's in right, Wesley Jones at third, Kevin Watley at short, Freddie Julie at second, Zachary Gray at first, Tommy Lacongo behind the plate. It'll be Ryan Kemp's turn with two down, and that one in there for a strike. Good off-speed pitch. Neely seem, seeming to mix it up a little bit more, but it's really that command. When it's there, Neely's effective. He's left a few mistakes over the plate. And the Mammoths so far have not missed them. But when he works ahead in counts like he is here against Kemp down 0-2, Neely is definitely one of the most effective pitchers in the U.S. PBL, and he has proven that. He can be a top two rotation guy for this Hoppers team that's loaded with some good pitchers. The 0-2 hits that outside corner. Kemp was frozen up on it. So the Mammoths go down 1-2-3 here. A good comeback inning for Neely. It's still a 6-1 ball game. We'll head to the home half of the fourth coming up on the USPBL YouTube channel.
Welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel. Zachary Gray takes a first pitch strike here from Will Neely. Neely sent down the hoppers in order last inning, 1-2-3. The 0-1 pitch is an off-speed one that missed the strike zone. Zachary Gray, 0-for-1 so far, grounded out to short back in that first inning. Takes another pitch there at 77. Neely, very good at mixing his speeds. Has topped out so far at 93 on the fastball. That pitch at 89, grounded over to Dobson at short. Routine play for him, firing over to Jake Pulshin for out number one. So Neely, like I was saying, that's Will, of course, for the Mammoths. He'll reach about 93 with that fastball, but with his curve, has been as low as around 76 to 77 miles per hour. So that's deceptive for the hitters. That's tough for them. When you're changing speeds on a dime like that, you got to be ready for anything up there at the plate. It'll be C.J. Huntley's turn. He's 0 for 1 so far. He let off the second inning. And he'll take that one in there for a strike. Huntley making his USPBL debut. Attended Indiana State University in his four years there. Hit 272 with 58 runs batted in. He'll ground one to second base here. Alec Craig fields it and flips to first. Two up and two down for the Hoppers here in the home half of the fourth. So they'll look to put together a two-out rally here as they're down already by five runs. And we're just in the fourth inning. It was that grand slam from Will Johnson, who's the left fielder for the Mammoths, that really has been the game changer so far. It'll be Steven Ring's turn. The Hillsdale College product also attended Brother Rice High School. He's out of Northville, Michigan, so a local kid. But Ring, 53 home runs over four years in just 190 total games. He's got quite the bat, especially power, but also hit for average in his four years. Amassed a 312 average, but a 369 mark his senior year, coming off that senior season. But he'll pop one out here to the catcher. Jackson Smith will make the catch. The Hoppers are retired in order once again. And after four, it's the Mammoth still in control with their 6-1 to lead. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
Welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel. Leo Ortel here on the call. It's the fifth inning now. Sonny Cortez will lead off this top half of the fifth. And he'll take a first pitch missing inside from Colby Neely, who sent down the Mammoths 1-2-3 back in the fourth after a tough third inning in which that grand slam from Will Johnson killed him. But Sonny Cortez goes down the line here just foul. Maybe by a couple of inches there. Could have been extra bases easily for Sonny Cortez, but Cortez also effective back in the third offensively. He got things going with them in that inning with that RBI single into right field. So he's one for two so far, and Cortez leading the league in average at 396, entering the game. His on-base percentage is above 500. Three doubles for him, one home run, just five RBIs entering now with six. He'll take the 1-1 one, one offering in there for a strike, one and two. But Cortez was hitting mainly in the one spot early in the season, but Mark Wiedemeyer moves him into the three spot at least over the past couple of weeks just so he can have the ability to drive in some more runs, the chance to drive in more runs, as I should say, as he grounds out. Over to the right side, Geely making that play. But whatever Mark Wiedemeyer has done with his lineup is working so far here. He's definitely happy to have some new bats and Alec Craig and Will Johnson to step up. So look for better offensive production in the league overall with a lot of new bats coming in. A lot of new faces, but also pitching. We don't know what we're going to see out of some arms. We have Will Neely in his, de in his debut tonight. He's looking strong so far. So it should be exciting either way with some new faces. Ethan Whisker, not a new face by any means. The USPBL co-player of the year last year. Also the runner-up in the home run derby. And he'll drive one into left field here. Daniel Valerio Ranged back at first, as you should, as an outfielder taking that first step back. Eventually charges in to make the catch. So two up, two down. Neely seems to be back in control in this game. Looking to send down the Mammoths 1-2-3 for the second time in a row. And I was talking to Paul Nochi before the game in that interview and he said Neely was going to go about five innings. We're not seeing anyone up and throwing in this hopper's pen yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if Neely comes out for the sixth inning if he's able to send down Barbie right here. Back-to-back -back one, two, three innings. You'd like to keep that starting pitcher in here. It's a long week with this Wednesday through Sunday schedule. The first Wednesday public game that we have had. So you got to save those bullpen arms for later in the week. And this will be most likely the first and last time we see Neely throwing this week unless he's used maybe as a relief pitcher. But this one popped over to the left side. It should be routine for Valerio. He'll make the catch, the second catch he's made in a row. Four out number three. So once again, the Mammoths go down one, two, three. Neely looking sharp as he struggled in the third. Seems to have his mojo back. But still, the Mammoths leading 6-1. to We'll head into the home half of the fifth. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
Welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel. After making the last two outs in left field for the Hoppers, Daniel Valerio will lead off the home half of the fifth inning. The Hoppers need to get it going offensively. Just one run on one hit so far. Will Neely is looking very strong in his USPBL debut. He fires in a 90-mile-an-hour fastball right on that outside corner, just where you want it to be. Valerio also making his USPBL debut for the Hoppers here, a Southeastern University product, takes the 0-1 offering that missed outside. Looked like an off-speed try for Will Neely. Maybe the two-seam fastball. We're not sure exactly what he features in his repertoire, but we've seen him using his changeup as he just threw there. Also his curveball and four-seamer. But we are seeing some fastballs, it looks like, coming in at 88. So... He appears to have a four-pitch arsenal with a four-seam, two-seam changeup and curveball. He changes speeds effectively. Fastball on the outside part of the plate there. Valerio makes good contact. Well, that's a perfect pitch there. Ahead in the count by Neely. Not messing around. He's not a guy so far that's going to waste a lot of pitches. He's going to attack hitters even when he is ahead in counts. But it's working for him so far. Credit to him. He's pitched in Division I ball right at the top level of college at the University of Tennessee. And Geely rolls one over to second. Craig fields it cleanly there. Throws the first for the second out. So two up and two down. It's going to be Simon Lacongo's turn. He popped out to the third baseman. Ryan Kemp back in his first at bat, so he's 0 for 1. Lacongo was the only catcher on this east side Diamond Hoppers roster officially, but now Steven Ring coming over from Hillsdale College, also a guy that can rack up some innings behind the plate, so that's good news for the Hoppers, but also a big bat for them. But Lacongo hit just 230 last year in 44 games. Definitely known as more of a defensive catcher, and he does a great job behind the plate, calls a great game, and has really helped out this Hoppers pitching staff that has been the most effective in the league so far as they enter with a league-best 3.39 team ERA and 136 strikeouts over 119 and a third. But Lacongo would like to get it going with the bat. We saw some good signs from him early in the season, but enters hitting just 208. 2-2 count against him. And Neely trying to send down the Hoppers. 1-2-3 for his second inning in a row, just like Colby Neely. The spelling's a little bit different on each pitcher's last names. Neely spelled N-E-A-L-Y. Colby and Will is N-E-E-L-Y. But Tommy Lacongo trying to put together a two-out rally. Singles into center field on a 3-2 offering. Good contact for him there. And just the second hit for the Hoppers, the other hit was Freddie Geely's RBI single back in the second. So at least good that the Hoppers are making contact here against Will Neely, who really has been dominant and effective. It's been the two airs for the Mammoths that have really cost them so far. And actually, now that I take a look at my scoring sheet here, that would have been the third inning in a row that the Hoppers were sent down 1-2-3, but obviously not so in this inning as the Congo reaches on the single. But the lineup turns over, back to the top. Pat Adams will step out here after calling time. It's a 1-0 count on him with the Congo on first, Neely working from the stretch. This one sent into right field. Not hit hard, but hit it to the right place. Lacongo stops at second. That's back-to-back -back singles for the Hoppers here in the fifth. And that's what Pat Adams does best. Gets on base for his team. Adams came in with a 516 on on-base percentage, good for second in the league among qualifiers. And he's been really the main supply of offense so far for the Hoppers this year, but with some new bats in the lineup, this is a team that 
has a lot of offensive potential. We know the pitching is there. Paul Nochi knows it as well. And he was touching on it in my interview with him before this game. But he was pretty excited to bring in three big bats and C.J. Huntley, Stephen Ring, Daniel Valerio to boost his lineup in the 5, 6, and 7 spots as the top of the lineup is pretty good for the Hoppers. So we'll see what we see from them. But we're at the top of the lineup here with Kevin Watley batting for the third time. He struck out twice swinging against Will Neely. So trying to put something in play here. Would like to send something into the outfield to try to score Congo from second. Not a ton of speed over there, but still always the potential with two outs. And this 1-0 pitch hits Watley. And not sure if that's going to be ruled a foul ball. May have caught part of the hand and the bat. And he's not grabbing any part of his hand, so it looks like that's going to be a foul ball. So a 1-1 count. So just caught a piece of that bat. First and second for the Hoppers, the 1-1. That one's good. 90 right on the outside corner. That's really been Neely's best stuff that we've seen from him. We've been seeing a lot of that, just attacking that outer portion of the strike zone, which is very tough for hitters to hit. What is off-speed stuff looking strong, too? We'll see if he'll go maybe to the curveball on the 1-2, but I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see him try to throw the high fastball here, and he does. Watley goes down swinging for the third time. The third strikeout overall for Will Neely. He continues his solid outing, giving up just the one hit in this inning. The Hoppers don't score. The Mammoths still lead this one after five, six to one with their five-run lead. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel. Welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel. Leo Ortel here on the call. Colby Neely returns for his sixth inning of work. He's gone five innings so far, giving up six runs and six hits. And those runs a lot in thanks to Will Johnson of the Westside Woolly Mammoths, who's standing in for the third time now. And he'll fly one into the right center field gap. That one's going to fall. We'll see if it's going to be extra bases. Johnson taking the turn. He's going to stay at first. But that's another hit for Will Johnson coming off that grand slam back in the third for his first USPBL home run in his public debut. So Johnson with the multi-hit game. Good signs for him and the West Side Woolly Mammoths. And actually, that was Johnson's first USPBL hit as well, was that grand slam. So his second hit now with a single. 
That ball in the dirt to Jackson Smith, and Will Johnson will now move up to second on that wild pitch. Not sure if that's going to be a passed ball or not. A pitch in the dirt was a tough block for Lacongo. He kind of kept it in front of him, but just scooted off a little bit to the left on your screen there. Jackson Smith had a double in his last at bat. I also had the pleasure of interviewing him before the game. And Smith knows what it's like at this time in the season for the newcomers because he was picked up in the showcase last year. He swings through that pitch on the 2-0. But Jackson Smith kind of came in in this part of the season that we're in, all the way back last year, played in that college showcase, which we just had on Monday. Smith, pretty versatile guy, can play some different positions, but mainly known as a backstop. The 2-1 pitch is grounded over to that first base side. But Smith so far, one for two with the double. Looking to at least advance the runner over with something soft hit to the right side. Johnson with a pretty good lead on second. Here comes the 2-2. And you can see he's trying to pull the ball down that first base line. The second time that he's fouled one off softly to that side. Down towards the direction of... The first base coach, Brian Cluppy, who I also interviewed before the game. Cluppy was with the train robbers of the Pecos League last year, earned the championship as the manager. Brings that experience in here. And look at that, 2-2. Sent into right field softly, and Mark Wiedemeyer is waving home Will Johnson. The throw to the plate, not in time. Jackson Smith just trying to advance the runner over. Sneaks one past Freddie Geely. It's a 7-1 lead now for the Mammoths. Great at bat there for Smith. He fouled off a few pitches. He was trying to pull the ball to the right side, and he did it. Geely maybe should have had that one at second. Maybe a little bit frustrated with himself, but it's just textbook baseball right there. Leadoff hitter getting on, advancing on the wild pitch. And then coming in to score on the single from Smith. And now another mound visit as we do see some action in the east side pen. Trying to take a look at who that is out there. Looking for the jersey number. But maybe trying to buy some time for the reliever. It'll be Jake Polshin's turn. It looks like for now Colby Neely will stay in the game. And warming up in the bullpen for the Hoppers is Tyler Tamaka. And now Paul Nochi will stroll out to the mound. The former Hillsdale College coach is going to make the pitching change here. It looks like Tyler Tamaka now coming out of the pen, waiting for the official signal, and there it is. The outing will be done for Colby Neely. We'll give you the final line on him and introduce our New pitcher, Tyler Tamaka, after a short break. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
And welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel. Tyler Tamaka will take over for Colby Neely. Neely's day is finished. He is responsible for Jackson Smith, the runner on first. But Neely throws five plus innings, giving up eight hits, seven runs, seven of them earned, three walks and two strikeouts. So not a typical Colby Neely outing that we are used to seeing. But Jake Polshin will send one into left center field here. The play cut off by Pat Adams and thrown into Watley. That's another single for Polchin, who singled back in the third. And three hits to start this inning now for the Mammoths, who have already plated one on the RBI single for Jackson Smith. Tamaka has had a good season so far after coming off a very strong 2018. Tamaka so far this season a 2.61 ERA in 10 and a third innings. Six walks, 12 strikeouts, just three earned runs for him. And I actually interviewed him before the game as well. Tamaka last year 3.19 ERA. So a great season for him last year, but doing even better this year. He was looking to build on his season from last year, but feels a lot more comfortable throwing in relief this season. He was kind of just adjusting to what it was like to play professional baseball last year, last year, I should say, after attending a small D3 college as he attended Loris College, the South Elgin, Illinois native did, and coming off of that into professional baseball is definitely a big step for him. He was picked up in the senior showcase last season and stepped in for the Hoppers and really was their most reliable relief pitcher. He pitched in a playoff game. I asked him about that a little bit. He said he loved the playoff atmosphere, but he really just loves pitching here at Jimmy John's Field. It's a great atmosphere. The fans very supportive and creates some pressure for you out there for sure, but Tamaka definitely used to it by now, but does not take it for granted. The 2-1 to Ryan Dobson, swung on and fouled back to the screen. So Dobson, 0 for 2 thus far. Looking for his first hit. 255 this season, 5 RBIs for him. Hunters on first and second, Tamaka... Enters the game in a tough spot with the runner on first, but gives up the single with no down in the inning. Working from the stretch, the 2-2. Missing below the knees and outside. Trying to paint that outside corner. Tamaka had seven saves last year. Actually, seven saves in his senior season. My mistake on that. At Laura's College, an all-conference honorable mention in D3 NCAA ball. Full count to Dobson, missing. Gets past Lacongo, won't matter here. Jackson Smith hustling over to third either way and rounding the bag slightly as he always gives it his all out there. Something that I was talking to him as well before the game about. I noticed Jackson Smith, a guy that always just gives 110% out there, whether it's hustling out a close play, a bang bang one at first or just like you saw right there, passed ball. He knows he's going to move over because of the walk either way, but those are the little things that can make a big difference, and if you're trying to get noticed by some scouts, those are the types of things that scouts look for. guy that's working hard out there and giving it his all, and Tamaka's going to have to give it his all here with, with bases loaded and no outs, and Alec Craig looking for his third hit already after singling in the first. He also has... One double, which came back in the third inning. 1-0 count, so Tamaka behind in a tough spot. And the 1-0, good pitch there. Hits the lower part of the strike zone just at the knees. Home plate umpire gives him the benefit of the doubt. Smith on third, Polshin on second, and Dobson on first. The Mammoths 
have them loaded up. The 1-1 one, one in there for a strike. Not sure what Craig is looking for. Didn't look like a bad pitch to hit. Tamaka would like to roll a double play ball here. Infield not playing in. So maybe just try to turn the traditional double play. Going from 2-1 to one rather than home to 1. And this one rolled past Wesley Jones at third into the outfield. And this one is going to score at least two as Smith scores, Pulsion scores. Craig gets it done with his third hit of the day. He gets a couple of RBIs. And the Mammoths are now up 9-1. to one. So really just an unfortunate break there. A ball not hit too hard, but finds the right hole. As well, Wesley Jones was not playing close to the third base bag. He had no chance to make that play. It just snuck right past him and hit soft enough as to where Valerio could not get the ball in quick enough. So now standing on second is Craig. Also with Ryan Dobson on third, Ryan Kemp's try. He takes the first pitch outside. And still no outs in the inning. The Mammoths putting together a great offensive day after struggling yesterday against the Beavers in the non-public game. They had just five hits and one run. But some of the new bats stepping up here, getting some RBIs. And really, it's been a huge difference maker for the Mammoths. 2-0 count on Kemp. Already with a couple of walks and also a strikeout. He grounds one to Wesley Jones. He makes the play here. He'll fire home. Not in time. This one gets past Tommy Lacongo. Kemp will take second. And also moving up to third is Craig. So the Mammoths will put up another run here. That will most likely go as a fielder's choice. But either way, the Mammoths putting up another run. They lead now by nine. Interesting play there for Jones. If he would have recognized that the runner was breaking for home, I believe it was Dobson, he could have thrown there at first, but he hesitated a little bit too much. He probably should have taken the easy out at first, but either way, second and third still for the Mammoths. And Sonny Cortez, a dangerous hitter, now up at the plate. Tamaka deals in. An off-speed pitch there. Hitting the strike zone 73 right on that outside corner. That's a good pitch there to start him out. Control not usually an issue for Tamaka, but a guy that needs to work east and west hitting outside corners or inside corners. That one right down the middle. Cortez, that one stays in the infield. But not able to make the play is Geely. Another run comes around to score. Craig scores for the third time in this game. And now a 10-run lead. That goes officially as an infield single for Sonny Cortez, his second and his second RBI. So the Mammoths cannot be stopped right now. 11-1, to no outs in the inning. It's going to be Ethan Whisker now at the plate. Putting together... Quite another inning here. After putting up five in the third, they've already got five here in the sixth. Whisker standing in, looking for his first hit, but does have an RBI. After grounding out back in the first, that was the first run that the Mammoths put on the board. The Hoppers answered with one in the second. But the Mammoths put up five in the third, thanks to a single from Cortez that scored one, and then the big grand slam from Will Johnson. And then now five in the sixth inning. Whisker swings right through an 87-mile-an-hour offering. First and third, 1-1 one, one count. Kemp on third and Cortez on first. The 1-1 one, one pitch missing below the knee is a good pick by Lacongo to keep it in front of him. Kemp with a lot of speed on third. He's going to look to get a good leadoff, maybe to score on a pass ball, but 10-run lead, maybe not wanting to risk it too much. Kind of a courtesy at this point in the game with this score to not take extra bases when they're not necessary. 
and also let the let the hitters try to drive in some more runs. Tamaka deals in a good breaking ball there, right on the outside corner. So 2-2 two, two count. Ethan Whisker, the Hillsdale College product. A lot of Hillsdale chargers in the house. Paul Nochi, the manager for the Hoppers, as Whisker grounds one up the middle here. Should be two. To second, 4-1, over to first for two. Won't be an RBI for Whisker, but it does drive in the run. Per baseball rules, if you ground into a double play and a run scores in the process, you do not get credit for the RBI because you created two outs. But either way, a six-run inning now for the Mammoths. They now lead 12-1. to one. Finally getting a couple of outs there. Definitely willing to sacrifice the two outs for the run is Tamaka and this whole Hoppers team. So good turn there by Watley. Geely and Zachary Gray completing it with the put out. Jake Barbie now standing in. Barbie reached on a walk back in the third, but 0 for 2 after flying out to left in the fifth, grounding out to short in the first. The 1 0 offering misses inside, so 2 0. Tamaka behind another hitter here. A tough outing for him so far. Always works from the stretch. The 2-0. Right down the heart of the plate there. Appeared to be that changeup with some good late action on it. Trying to escape this inning. And the 2-1, the check swing. Appeal down to first. Says he did swing. Good call there by the infield umpire. The count runs to 2-2. Two and two. Pretty good crowd here at Jimmy John's Field. On our first Wednesday night game of this 2019 season. If you haven't been out to the ballpark, be sure to come out. A great venue for the fans, a lot of places to sit, some good food to enjoy as well as drinks. The 2-2 pitch missing 3-2 and two now. Great grandstand seating elevated above the field. You also got the lower level suites pretty much at a dugout level. Then you got the patios down the left field and right field lines. The Chevy Pavilion out in left field as well as the Chevy Pavilion Chevy tent down the right line as well, the right field line, which hosts birthday parties. So if you got a birthday, you want to come to the ballpark, you pick up a ticket package for that, but you also can't go wrong with the $6 lawn seat out in right field. So a ton of options here at the fan-friendly Jimmy John's Field as Jake Barbie finally retires the side here as he lines one out to Zachary Gray to end the inning. Tamaka frustrated with himself in his toughest outing so far this year. But the Mammoths lead in this one 12-1. We'll head to the home half of the sixth coming up on the USPBL YouTube channel.
And to the home half of the sixth inning we go here on the USPBL YouTube channel. And Wesley Jones pops one out here right behind home plate. That's going to turn into a souvenir for a fan. Some cheers from the crowd. Wesley Jones 0 for 2 thus far. Reach base in the first inning. And he'll send one into the right center field gap here. It's going to fall. Didn't hit it all that hard, but finds the right place for it. And Wesley Jones on for the second time, but collects his first hit. As the Hoppers need to get it going offensively, that was just their fourth hit against the starting pitcher, Will Neely, still in the ballgame here for his sixth inning of work. We do see some action in the west side pen, but Neely, that is Will Neely, of course, as it was a battle of Neely's with Colby starting for the Hoppers, Will Neely has been very effective, and he's looked very sharp. The only damage done back in the second inning was some sloppy defense that I believe will go as an unearned run. Zachary Gray rolls one over past the diving Alec Craig into right field. So just sneaks one through there. Back-to-back -back hits for the Hoppers, something that has not happened too often in this game. It did happen last inning. But it was with two outs as Lacongo and Pat Adams both singled after Geely and Valerio were retired as the first two batters of the inning. But the first two batters in this inning, a different story for them with two singles. And it will be C.J. Huntley looking for his first hit in his USPBO career. And he'll pop one out to the first base side here, Jackson Smith. Would have made the catch there off the net, but hits the net before it enters his glove there. A little bit too high for him to catch it. Still good effort nonetheless. 0-1 count now on Huntley. So Huntley, a, kind of a local product, you could say. Kalamazoo, Michigan, not too far away, but attended Indiana State University for four years as he fouls one back off to the right side. A 272 average for him hit 275 in his senior season. So it should be interesting to see what Huntley can bring to the table for the Hoppers offensively. Hitting in the five spot, so Paul Nochi must have seen something in batting practice from Huntley. A couple of good hitters behind him as well. Newcomers in Steven Ring and Daniel Valerio. Huntley is down 0-2. He'll ground one over to the right side. That one is going to get past the diving Alec Craig. Wesley Jones is being waved home. Whisker can't find it in right field. And it looks like the other runner, Zachary Gray, is going to move up to third here. So an RBI single, the first earned run technically allowed by Will Neely. Solid single there for Huntley as he collects his first USPBL hit. And RBI as that ball is thrown in to Paul Nochi who puts that in his back pocket there to eventually give to Huntley but he gets it done here here in the bottom of the sixth inning hoppers are down by 10 but you never know what can happen in a baseball game and that's the beauty of it you see something new every time and it looks like the outing is going to be finished for Will Neely and it was a pretty good one for him He'll be replaced by a relief pitcher as Mark Wiedermeyer makes the change. So we'll give you the info on his final line and the new pitcher entering when we come back. This is the USPBL YouTube channel. Don't go away.
And back into the action here on the USPBL YouTube channel. It's a pitching change for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. They go to the lefty Jake Davis. Will Neely's day is done. He pitched five innings, five plus I should say, as he did pitch in to this sixth inning as Steven Ring will send one into right field. That's going to be his first hit here in the USPBL, and it will drive in one run and also advance the runner to third just safe. Barely after the throw from Ethan Whisker in right field, but Steven Ring gets his first USPBL hit, and the Hoppers put up another run here, 12-3 to ball game, and it will remain first and third for the Hoppers. Now four singles in a row. But just as I was getting into Neely's final line, he was responsible for the runner on first and third, so he currently is responsible for C.J. Huntley, and he was also responsible for Zachary Gray, who just scored. So his unofficial final line is Valerio grounds one foul to the left side. Neely, five-plus innings pitched, six hits, three runs, two of them earned now. No walks for him, and struck out three. All of them were Kevin Watley swinging. So just those three strikeouts, not a bad USPBL debut for him. He kept his team in the game, and they've got a sizable lead, so they're willing to turn it over here to Jake Davis as Valerio sends one foul again, this time on a late swing attempt. But Davis, the only left-hander on the roster to start the season, it'll be interesting to see if the Mammoths added a few more left-handed pitchers, but... Only time will tell for that. As I take a look at the roster, he's, he is one of two lefties on the roster as Tyler Schmidt is a newcomer. This one, grounded to the right side, should be two. Dobson over to first, and he's out. They turn two. Another run does score. So just like we saw last inning as Whisker grounded into the double play and the run scored, Valerio does the same. He doesn't get credit necessarily for the RBI, but it does give the Hoppers another run. 12 to 4 ball game now, but there are two outs. So not what the Hoppers really wanted there. They do get the run, but you definitely don't want to ground into a double play with no outs and first and third, but that's the beauty of having that open base at second. First and third situations can be some of the most difficult because you don't have the force out at home. But when you can roll a double play like that and you've got the sizable lead, you'll take two for the price of one while only giving up one run. And Geely will bat against the left-hander Jake Davis. Taking the first pitch for a strike. So Neely, I believe, will be credited with another earned run. He'll finish with three earned runs. Four runs total. But Jake Davis has not done a bad job since coming in. Rolls the double play. Now just one out away from escaping this home half of the sixth inning. A very long sixth inning here as the man has put up six in the top half and the Hoppers already with three here. Julie would like to string together a two-out rally. A decent game for him so far in this eight spot. One for two with an RBI single, which put the Hoppers back on the board. I should say on the board for the first time back in the second. Julie grounds one foul down the third base line. Another great night for baseball here at Jimmy John's Field. Temperature at 70 degrees. The sun wasn't really shining towards the beginning of the game. Kind of overcast, but a great day for baseball. And Jake Davis will get his first strike out here as Geely is caught looking. The Hoppers put up three, but they are still trailing the Mammoths 12-4. Six innings have gone. This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
And welcome back, everyone, to the USPBL YouTube channel. Leo Ortel broadcasting solo tonight. Rich Borland is my broadcast partner for the summer. The play-by-play -play broadcaster for the league is doing the PA announcing today. As our usual PA announcer, Johnny G, could not make it to the game today. So Rich doing a good job over the PA. If you can hear him maybe in some background noise, that's Rich doing a great job. So he'll be back with me in the booth for tomorrow, but back to the action here. Will Johnson, what a game for him. Two for three, a single, but an even bigger hit, his grand slam, which was his first USPBL hit. And we're just beginning to see what Johnson can do with his bat after a great senior year at Eastern Kentucky University. He put up 16 home runs and 47 RBIs. Also, a team record 56 walks, good for a 440 on base percentage. Very dominant player for Eastern Kentucky, but more importantly, already looking dominant here for the West Side Woolly Mammoths. Tamaka's back out for another inning, and Will Johnson sends one over to Watley. A great diving stop, but unable to complete the play there. Great pick by Watley. We know he's got the strong throwing arm, but hit a little bit too soft. That will go as Will Johnson's third hit of this game. And the Mammoth's last inning put up six runs as everyone came to bat in the inning. So another great offensive breakout for the Mammoths. They did so in a non-public game last week against the Unicorns, but had another tough week. They still only got three wins coming into this game. But looking like they're going to pull together to win this one. Game not over by any means, but has been tough for the Hoppers. It's going to be tough for them to come back. Jackson Smith's down 0-2 here. Two hits for him, a double back in the third, a single. Back in the sixth inning, ended the inning, excuse me, ended the outing for Colby Neely, who had a tough day, but Jackson Smith will go chasing here. The drop third strike sends him down for the second time in his four at bats. But Tamako looking better this inning so far, does have the man on first. After the infield single for Will Johnson. And Jake Polson standing in takes a first page strike. A single for him in the sixth inning. And also one in the third inning. But the runner was trying to score after he sent one into left field. And he was nabbed at the plate. So that did end the inning back in the third. 1-1 one, one count here on Polshin. 282 entering the game. One home run, three RBIs. Originally the DH, but he came in to replace Barbie at first back in the second inning. And the 1-1 one, one swung on and missed. So Tamaka, after coming in for Neely last inning, did struggle tremendously, and he was really frustrated with himself, a guy that doesn't show a lot of Anger and emotion, usually pretty mild-tempered, but frustrated with his outing, but he's answered nice so far. He'd like to have a clean inning here. Just as a confidence boost, he's had a great season, coming off a good season, looking to continue the success for the Hoppers, who have relied on him quite a bit in relief, and he has been reliable for them. Different story tonight, but you got to put the pass behind you and move on. And Tamaka, with the experience he's had in the USPBL, knows the type of hitters that he faces in this league can be very difficult, but he knows how to handle them. He knows how to handle the pressure. Pitching in the playoffs last year. And a pressure pressure situation right here at the 3-2 count. Runner on first. His team is behind, so not a ton of pressure p pitching as far as the score goes, but the 3-2 pitch missing, and he walked him. Now 
Ryan Dobson, the nine hitter, will stand in. Got on base in the sixth with a walk, but is looking to get into the hit column as the Mammoths do have 12 already, but Dobson, one of the few that does not have a hit on the team. First and second. Let's see what Dobson can do. He takes the first pitch, missing. Action in the east side bullpen. Maybe some new guys out there. So we might be seeing some new faces from the Hoppers. As far as pitching, we've already seen quite a few hitters. So the 1-0 pitch is fouled off. It appears one of the guys getting loose in the pen is number 13. Not currently listed on our online roster, but... If a change is made, we'll definitely let you know who that is. For now, 1-1 one, one count on Dobson. First and second with one down. The 1-1 one, one missing outside runs the count to 2-1. And, and Dobson was hitting towards the beginning of this lineup last week and for most of the season. He kind of took over that one spot for Cortez. As we know, Dobson has a lot of speed, leads the the league right now with six stolen bases and six attempts as he fouls one off but used as kind of a double leadoff hitter here in that nine spot not a bad move for Mark Wiedemeyer but maybe just recognizing Dobson is in a little bit of a slump here after getting off to a hot start this season the batting average has dropped down to 255 and when you move a guy down in the lineup they see a little bit better of pitches and takes the pressure off as well allows them to focus a little bit more while they're in the box Dobson now with a full count no home runs for him this year the Mammoth now have 10 after the grand slam for Will Johnson and that 3-2 pitch fought off out of play, Dobson with a little bit of shake in his head. Looked like Tamaka maybe he left that one over the plate, but Dobson just missing it, a little bit frustrated. You see him trying to go to the opposite field with that practice swing, trying to keep his hands inside the baseball, but still take it the opposite way. Full count. Once again, and he walked him. Back-to-back -back walks issued by Tamaka. It's just not his day so far. A tough outing for him, really the first time that we have said that this season. We do have a left-hander getting loose in the east side pen. But the base is loaded for the time being. One down, Alec Craig, not a guy you want to see standing in. Already with three hits, two singles, a double, and two RBIs. Quite the start to his USPBL career after going two for three in the non-public game yesterday. Back-to-back -back games with multi-hits and really providing that spark at the top of the lineup. Came around to score for the first time back in the first, which was the first run of the game for the Mammoths. And has also scored two times after that so he's got three runs a double two singles two RBIs so definitely a guy you want in your leadoff spot if you're Mark Wiedemeyer and the Mammoths another chance to drive in several runs with the bases juiced Alec Craig takes the 2-0 below the knees so Tamaka does not have the command today that's what he really relies on. He's not a guy that's going to go out there and strike out a ton of hitters by blowing them away with a fastball. He's going to work the corners, and he has not been able to really find those corners in this outing. Don't want to walk him here. No base to give up, and he does walk him. Three walks in a row issued by Tamaka, and that will send out Paul Nochi for the stroll as the Mammoths go up 13-4. Looks like Tamaka's outing will be done. A tough one for him. 
looked like he was bouncing back kind of early in this inning after just the soft contact infield single and then the strikeout to Smith. But three walks in a row, and the outing for Tamaka is done. So a relief pitcher will be coming in. It looks like it's going to be the left-hander, so we'll let you know who that is. But we'll take a break and be back shortly on the USPBL YouTube channel. And welcome back, everyone, to the USPBL YouTube channel. Lee Wartell alongside you doing the play-by-play -play for tonight's game. It'll be Raven Martin taking over for the Hoppers. The left-hander attended Louisville University. Heralds from Dallas, Georgia. And at Louisville in 2018, 14 games for him, 15 and a third, a 2.93 ERA, 15 strikeouts, and 10 walks. Before going to Louisville, two years of prep baseball at Darton State College, so able to pitch good at Darton State, moving up to the D1 Louisville, one of the best baseball schools in the country. But he comes in, in in a tough spot here. He'll face off against Ryan Kemp with the bases loaded and just one out after Tyler Tamaka struggled out there, which is something we don't say too often. So the first pitch here to Ryan Kemp is swung on and sent into right field. Should be deep enough to score the run as C.J. Huntley fields it. The runner coming home. That's Jake Polshan. The throw in, not a good one. But either way, does score the run. 14-4. Mammoth, the f second out now in the inning. Runners on first and third. So Ryan Kemp gets it done with the sack fly. And it will be Sonny Cortez's turn with the bases loaded. Most likely one of the reasons that Paul Nochi elected to go with his lefty in Rabin Martin, currently the only left-handed pitcher on this Hoppers roster. But Cortez, lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, you're trying to shut him down any way you can, especially with the day that he has had and the season, really, that he has had. He's two for four, also reached on a fielder's choice back in the first. But a couple of singles for him and two RBIs. Sonny Cortez able to produce more in this three spot with more chances to drive in runs, which is why Mark Wiedemeyer moved him into this spot. 0-1, takes a big hack there. But Cortez entered with just five RBIs, but definitely not the way that his season is going based on his stats as far as RBIs. He's had a great season, batting 396, entering the game. His on-base percentage well above 500, and look at that. Another base hit for Sonny Cortez. 
His third RBI and third hit of the day will make it 15 to four Mammoths. Sonny Cortez just cannot be stopped in this three spot. Already earned himself USPBL Player of the Week honors a couple of weeks ago. He'd like to do it again here, but Cortez really one of the premier candidates to make it into affiliated ball this season. He was with Brian Kluppy, who he's standing near as Kluppy's coaching first base. But Kluppy with the train robbers of the Pecos League, like I mentioned earlier in the broadcast. And Kluppy was able to bring over a few guys from the train robbers that have performed well, especially Sonny Cortez. Ethan Whisker now standing in, takes a first pitch for a ball. 1-0 count to him. Whisker fouls one off here. One RBI for him came back in the first. He also did drive in a run in the sixth inning, not an RBI technically as it was a double play for Whisker. But looking for his first hit, there's most of the roster for the Mammoths does have a hit, 13 hits overall for them, and he'll do it right here. Singles into left field. Mark Wiedemeyer is going to hold the runner at third, perhaps as a courtesy for the Hoppers who are now trailing by 11, but could have scored maybe on that, but not trying to test the arm of Valerio. It was a single into left field back in the third where Valerio threw out Jackson Smith, who was trying to score from second, so also maybe just not trying to take the risk on a good arm out there in left. So showing some respect for that arm of Valerio. But it will be Jake Barbie's turn. Another Mammoth looking for his first hit. And he fouls one off. Barbie reached on a walk in the third. A line out ended the sixth inning. As he was the last batter in that inning, the lineup would have gone back to Will Johnson, who led off that sixth, but almost able to bat around. Good contact for Barbie last time with the Line out right over to Zachary Gray at first, but he's behind now 0-2. Barbie now in his second season, a USPBL All-Star last year. But he has been a lot better at the plate this season, hitting 280 coming into the game. He hit just 248 last year, got on base quite a bit with the 357 on base percentage, but Barbie a really calm hitter up at the plate, showing signs of maturity compared to last season. Definitely looks like a professional hitter up there with his collected approach. Bases juiced, two down. The 0-2 swung on and missed. So good pitch there. Finally retires the side. The Mammoths put up another, another three runs. They lead 15-4. to This is the USPBL YouTube channel.
And welcome back, everyone, to the USPBL YouTube channel. Leo Ortel, alongside you for the broadcast this evening. It's going to be a pinch hitter. Luke Johnson is going to enter the ball game for Tommy Lacongo as the catcher. So the Hoppers pick up a couple of catchers, and Stephen Ring, who's the DH for tonight, but Luke Johnson making his USPBL debut. And he'll foul one off here. Jake Davis back out for his second inning of work. He came in to relieve Will Neely last inning. The Hoppers did score three, but the Mammoths, who cannot be stopped offensively right now, stopping past the Hoppers by putting up 15 runs and 14 hits, put up three last inning to answer them. And that 2-1 pitch sent over to left field. That's going to be a base hit. The first at bat for Luke Johnson results in his first USPBL hit. So a lot of firsts here for the Hoppers as many people, many players, I should say, making their USPBL debuts. C.J. Huntley, Stephen Ring, Daniel Valerio. But nice job there by Luke Johnson to replace Lacongo on for the first hit of the inning as the first batter of the inning. Lineup turns over back to the top here for Pat Adams. A single for him his last time up in the fifth. Fouls one off to the left side. A late swing attempt there. Lefty on lefty matchup. Pat Adams against Jake Davis. Here comes the 0-1. High and inside. Adams did not offer at it. The 1-1 from the lefty, Davis missing outside. So back-to-back -back balls issued here by Davis. Pat Adams, one for three, a couple of ground outs over to second. One in the first, one in the third. He was two for five back on June 8th, June 8th which was the Hopper's last game with a run and an RBI. And that game was against the Mammoths, a 12-3 victory for them. But it's been different here tonight. Kind of flip-flopped offensively as the Mammoths have the 15-4 lead on 14 hits. Both teams with two errors, so not the cleanest defensive game either. 2-2. Two -two. Missing inside. 3-2 count. Full on Pat Adams. Adams from... Warren, Michigan, local product, attended Wayne State University and also De La Salle High School. And the 3-2 rings him up. So a strikeout there for Jake Davis, his second after striking out Geely to end the sixth. Pat Adams goes down via the look for the first out. It's going to be Kevin Watley's turn. Three strikeouts for him, all swinging and all against Will Neely, he went chasing on a high fastball back in the fifth, but Watley looking to just at least put something into play. You definitely don't want to ground into a double play, but Watley having a tough day trying to make up for it here. Swing and a miss. Big cut from Watley. It's usually favorable for righties to face lefties. You can see the ball a little bit better. But you definitely aren't used to seeing too many lefties, especially here in the U.S. PBL, as the 0-1 fouled off 0-2 count now. So Watley looking for his first hit after a multi-hit game against the Mammoths on June 8th. In the 9 spot, he was 2 for 3 with 2 runs, but Paul Nochi decides to move him back up to the number 2 spot in this game. Hasn't paid off for him so far. Swing and a miss. Kevin Watley goes down swinging for the fourth time. The golden sombrero for him. So a tough day. Back-to-back -back strikeouts now for Jake Davis. One out away from getting out of this bottom of the seventh inning. 
And Wesley Jones will get a crack at it here, taking the first pitch missing. Wesley Jones singled back in the sixth inning, which got things started for the Hoppers offense that put up three runs. So not a terrible offensive day for them. And he grounds one over to second here, takes a nasty hop, but Alec Craig stays with it, flips to Dobson. That retires the side. So one base runner for the Hoppers, one hit for Luke Johnson, the first of his USPBO career. But then Jake Davis sends down three in a row. So the man is still leading in this one, 15-4. to four. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel. We're through seven here at Jimmy John's Field, and it will be Will Johnson leading off the top half of the eighth inning. He'll face against Raven Martin, who just came in last inning in relief for Tyler Tamaka, who had a tough outing, but Raven Martin came in and gave up a sack fly to Ryan Kemp, an RBI single to Sonny Cortez, a single to Whisker, but ended up escaping the inning with a strikeout to Barbie as the past two innings the Mammoths have sent up every hitter to the plate. So what a showing for their offense that really needed this this breakout. But also backed by some pretty good pitching as well with we, Will Neely giving up just three earned runs over five. Jake Davis coming in as the relief pitcher doing a fine job as well. Will Johnson, two for four for him. Actually three for four with him. The scoreboard says two for four, but... Also an infield single in the seventh. If you remember all the way back to the third, that grand slam over the left field wall for Will Johnson made it a 5-1 to one ball game. This one grounded over to the right side. Hit hard. Geely fields it, though. Over to Gray for out number one. So if that is Johnson's last at bat, what a public debut. Actually... What a US yeah, what a USPBL public debut for him. He did play yesterday, but did not get any hits in three at bats in the non public contest. But man, what a showing for Will Johnson, who we could see maybe bumped up in the lineup the next time that the Mammoths play. It'll be Jackson Smith's turn. And the first pitch missing. Fastball from Raven Martin. Smith has put together a nice game. Two hits for him, two for four. 
RBI single in the sixth inning and a double back in the third. He just makes contact there, checking to see if he broke the bat. Looks like he didn't. So sticks with that piece of lumber. Martin working from the stretch with no runners on base. Deals in a good 1-1 breaking ball. Hits the bottom of the zone. That's a great pitch on the 1-1. Seemed to have frozen Jackson Smith up there at the dish. Ball that looks like it's going to be coming in on your hands, but then it just finds its way, curving right into the strike zone, just like that pitch right there, 68 miles per hour only. But seems to be pretty effective as he had Smith out in front that time. So back-to-back -back breaking balls. Does he throw a third? Might want to go with the high fastball in this situation, up and in on the left-handed hitting Smith. We'll see what he elects to go with. Looks like it's going to be a fastball. Calling for it inside, but not too high. Maybe wanted to elevate it a little bit more, but either way, Smith staying alive. Looking for his third hit. The Mammoths with 14 hits through seven and a third. Smith rolling one over here. Really has put together some quality at bats today. Back in that sixth inning. Put up a tough battle at the plate, able to sneak a single past Geely into right field that drove in one. Just trying to advance the runner, but able to score him from second. Some great at-bats for Smith, some long at-bats. Gives your team the opportunity to see a few more pitches as he fouls off another one there. An early swing attempt on another breaking ball from Raven Martin. Find its way into the street. But putting up another tough battle is Smith. A class act guy. Like I said, I interviewed him before the game at the media desk out front. And he just likes to keep it simple at the plate. Take it one pitch at a time. A very good athletic backstop. A great blocker behind the plate. Calls a good game. I talked to him a little bit about catching. and He really does enjoy being the backstop for the Mammoths, and he'll swing and miss here. Finally goes down, hustling down to first, as he always does, almost falling, but able to regain balance. But the catcher able to throw him out there. That's Luke Johnson now behind the plate as he came in for Tommy Lacongo. Two down now. Another strikeout for Rabin Martin. He ended the seventh with one. And the second batter goes down via the strikeout in the eighth. It's Jake Polson's turn with two down. Check swing. Umpire calls it a strike anyway. Polson attended Houston Baptist University, native of California, and not sure what happened there. Raven Martin totally lost his grip on that pitch. Way off to the left side. If we had some type of fox tracks or pitch tracking system here, it definitely would not have registered on that, missing by a mile. So 1-1 one, one count on Pulshin. He finds the strike zone this, this time as Pulshin taps one down to first. Easy play for Zachary Gray, who takes it himself. And the Hoppers go down 1-2-3 here in the eighth. So we'll head to the home half of the eighth. Coming up on the USPBL YouTube channel, Mammoths leading 15-4.
Welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel, home half of the eighth inning. Now, and Zachary Gray will be standing in against a new pitcher here. It'll be Tyler Schmidt, the left-hander, taking over for another left-hander in Jake Davis. But Tyler Schmidt making his public USPBL debut today. He pitched yesterday in that non-public game, which was against the Beavers. He threw a clean inning, giving up no earned runs and walking just one batter. He's got Zachary Gray down in the count here, one and two. Keeps it simple out there on the mound as he works from the stretch. The pretty traditional out of the stretch delivery. 2-2 two -two count on Gray. Gray singled back in the sixth inning, but one for three overall. And time is called as that will be called no pitch. It would have missed outside, but it looked like the home plate umpire called time just as Zachary Gray was stepping out. Umpire gives him the time. Tyler Schmidt looking for a strikeout. Here comes the 2-2, and he gets it. Swing and a miss. Gray is retired. And Tyler Schmidt earns his first strikeout in his USPBL career. So not a bad outing for him yesterday. The one inning against the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers. Didn't give up any hits, just the one walk. Didn't strike out any batters, but it'll be interesting to see what we get out of the arm of Tyler Schmidt. It's good that the Mammoths have another lefty as this one rolled over too short. Huntley grounds out as Dobson completes the play. So two up and two down as Huntley's retired with the ground out. It will be Stephen Ring's turn. Not a bad debut for him. One for three with the RBI single, which was his first USPBL hit back in the sixth. Great sixth inning for the Hoppers as they put up three, but hard to match. A total of 15 runs for the Mammoths. Steven Ring, quite the college career for him at Hillsdale. 53 home runs in four years. His senior campaign, 369 with a 505 on base percentage, 18 home runs, and 58 RBIs. So definitely a great bat for the Hoppers to have in this lineup. A ton of power in his bat. Good hitters count here, too, at the 2-0. And now the count runs to 3-0. Three zero pitch. We'll see if he gets the take sign here, and he does. He walks him, and Ring unstraps that leg guard, leaves the bat there, and he'll take the free pass down to first. So first base runner of the inning for the Hoppers is Tyler Schmidt was looking to send him down one two three, but unable to do so here. It'll be Daniel Valerio's turn. He grounded into a double play back in that sixth inning with runners on first and third. The run did come in to score, but Valerio does not get credit for the RBI and is still looking for his first USPBL hit in his first game. Showed off his arm earlier in left field as he nabbed a runner that was trying to score. That was Jackson Smith trying to score from second on a Jake Pulshin single. So we know that the defense is there, at least the arm of Val Valerio, just beginning to see what he can do with his bat as the 1-0 missing high. And Jackson Smith will go out to talk things over with Tyler Schmidt after he has thrown six straight balls. So 
So Valerio, as I mentioned before, attended Southeastern University, and also he comes over with Noah Stroll, who is a right-handed pitcher who will also be playing for the Diamond Hoppers. So some college teammates reuniting here, and Valerio sending one into center field. Solid contact, but Sonny Cortez hasn't played well. The Hoppers get one base runner via the walk to Steven Ring. They strand one, and the Hoppers still trail 15-4. to You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel. Welcome back to the USPBL YouTube channel. We head to the ninth inning. Mammoth still in control by a long shot here as they lead 15-4. to four. They've put up 14 hits. Not a bad offensive day either for the Hoppers. Eight hits and four runs, but can't seem to match the Mammoths as Dobson rolls one over to Kevin Watley. He makes the play there for the first out of the inning. So Ryan Kemp, excuse me, that's not Ryan Kemp. That'll be Alec Craig stepping in. Ryan Kemp waiting on deck. Ryan Kemp usually the one hitter, but the two hitter today. Alec Craig stands in. He's been on base four times. Two singles, a double, and a walk, and also a pair of RBIs. After going two for three with a run scored yesterday, another great performance for him. And here comes the 1-0. This one sent deep into right field. Chasing back is Huntley on the track. Will make the catch. Craig just missed that one by a few feet there. Solid contact for him. Sounded good off the bat. Great public debut for Alec Craig. He's retired his last time up, but hard to beat the day that he had with the three hits and the walk. Just missed the home run there. So Ryan Kemp now will stand in with two down. Raven Martin having another good inning here after sending down the Mammoths 1-2-3. Back in the eighth, looking to do it again in the ninth. And the 1-0 is fouled out of play. That one will be a souvenir for someone in the grandstands.
Kemp had a sack fly his last time around. Has reached twice with a couple of walks and also reached on an air, which also drove in a run in the sixth, in which the Mammoths put up six runs, which is their most in any inning scored. Also put up five in the third, so the runs have come in bunches for the most part. Five in the third, six in the sixth, and three in the seventh, but did have the single run in the first. Kemp's behind in the count, one and two. Martin deals, good take there by Kemp as the breaking ball misses below the knees in the dirt. For anyone currently in the bathrooms or up at the suite level, remember there's batting practice on the field after the game for the fans, so be sure to stick around for that. Take a few hacks out on the field. It's a pretty cool opportunity. Back into the action. The 2-2 pitch to Kemp. That breaking ball missing just outside. Another good take by Kemp, who's already drawn a pair of walks, but is looking for his first hit. But a guy that definitely battles up there at the plate Really puts together some good at-bats. He rolls one over to Kevin Watley here. Fields it on the backhand and throws easily over to Zachary Gray at first. Two retire to the side, so it will be the last chance for the Hoppers coming up in the bottom of the ninth. They trail by 11. You're watching the USPBL YouTube channel. We're through eight and a half here at Jimmy John's Field. We head to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Hoppers with their last chance here. Down by 11. Would definitely be a tough comeback for them, but if you remember back a couple of weeks ago, the Hoppers had a miraculous comeback in which they put up six runs in the bottom of the ninth to come back against the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, but would be a lot tougher here. They'd have to put up 12. Geely grounding one to the shortstop Dobson. He'll make the play for out number one. Also a pitching change for the Westside Woolly Mammoths as the right-hander Brennan Price enters this ball game. After the Mammoths went with back-to-back -back lefties and Jake Davis and Tyler Schmidt, who proved to be very effective after Will Neely's USPBL debut as he started on the mound. They elect to go with Brennan Price here, who has struggled with his control this season. In 10 innings pitched, has walked eight batters and has a 8.10 ERA as he faces off against Luke Johnson, who singled in his first USPBL at bat back in the seventh. But Price has struggled with his control, and he's looking to improve on his season. Not in a tough spot here as he's got the comfortable 11-run lead, but... Mark Wiedemeyer trying to get him some work out there. Price played affiliated ball with the Toronto Blue Jays 
and also was drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers back in 2016. So definitely no stranger to the mound. That's for sure. But Price struggled with his control in affiliated baseball, and he's trying to work his way back up. He's got the stuff to do it, just needs to be able to throw strikes into the zone. That's really what it comes down to. It sounds simple, and it's definitely not by any means. You also can't just throw strikes right down the middle. you got to find those corners. you got to work east and west, north and south, change speeds, change the locations. Pitching seems like it's something simple, but it's very tough. You also have to take really good care of your arm. Doing arm care, arm care programs, excuse me, because you rack up a lot of innings throughout the season, especially in professional baseball. Luke Johnson with the 2-2 count. He'd like to add another hit to his ledger after singling in the seventh for his first USPBL hit and his first at bat. Full count. This one grounded to Dobson once again. He fields it cleanly there. Throws to first wide, but Pulshin stays on the bag to record out number two. Taking a look at the rest of the week's schedule will be the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers battling the Eastside Diamond Hoppers as they play in back-to-back -back nights. It's Harry Potter Night tomorrow, presented by Fairy Tale Entertainment. Also, Thirsty Thursday at the ballpark, so some good deals on some beverages at Thirsty Thursday is presented by Dave and Buster's. Working into, working into Friday, it will be the West Side Willie Mammoths taking on the Utica Unicorns on Nerf Night, presented by Fairy Tail Entertainment, and also, of course, our fireworks spectacular. Julian Jones is pinch hitting here for Pat Adams. He's making his USPBL debut. So a lot of new faces for the Hoppers, which is definitely what Paul Nochi needed in his lineup that has struggled and really has been the part of their team that just has not produced. The pitching has been there all season, but they need to get some bats going. And we saw some positive signs from guys today like C.J. Huntley and Steven Ring, as well as Daniel Valerio in the seven spots. So those five, six, and seven guys producing pretty well today. We're seeing... Luke Johnson, like we just saw, and now Julian Jones is going to strike out here, and that will end this ball game. So the Mammoths take this one by a final of 15 to four. A dominant offensive performance from them. A lot in thanks to Jackson Smith with an RBI for him, Ethan Whisker. A couple of runs driven in for him. Sonny Cortez, Ryan Kemp, Alec Craig, all those guys with RBIs. But it was Will Johnson with that grand slam back in the third inning as he drove in four with his first USPBL hit and home run in his public USPBL debut. But the West Side Woolly Mammoths earn a big win today as they move to 4-11 and 11 on the season, gaining some ground on Birmingham Bloomfield. And the Utica Unicorns still in the league lead at 11-3, and three, so trying to make up some ground on them. But Eastside moves back to 500. They're now standing at 7-7. Seven and seven. I was just getting into the rest of the week here at Jimmy John's Field. Like I said, Nerf Night on Saturday, presented by Fairytale Entertainment with our fireworks spectacular as always. ESPN3 will be doing that broadcast. And on the 15th, the Saturday, it's WCSX Classic Rock Saturday with Detroit Rock City. Don't miss that one. It's the Kiss Tribute Band as the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers take on the Utica Unicorns. And then our Sunday Father's Day, Curly's Father's Day Barbecue, will be the promotion for that game. And as always, a Sunday fun day. So be sure to bring Dad out to the Sunday game as it will be the Hoppers against the Corns but definitely a good game to kick off the week here as the Mammoths finally putting up another win as they had gotten off to a tough start this season. They explode offensively thanks to some newcomers in Alec Craig and Will Johnson and also some guys who have been here all season like Ryan Kemp 
and Sonny Cortez, but also a good outing on the mound for Will Neely in his debut, giving up three earned runs over five innings, not too shabby for your professional debut after Neely pitched at the University of Tennessee. But we are all said and done here at Jimmy John's Field. The Mammoths take this one by a final of 15-4. It's been Leo Ortel on the call. Thanks for tuning in.